I will check that. We have about seven to eight minutes before I announce the stream, so I'm not going to do anything before that on the off chance anyone wants to um, wants to join. Probably not, but you know, we, we do leave that possibility open as a theory. So um, what we're going to be looking at today, and I'm not going to give away too much about this, um, is we're going to continue looking at the Twitch data server that I was trying to create. Sorry, the data server I was trying to create, and Twitch just means I'm doing it on Twitch. Um, and we're going to do a little bit more with this. We're going to be uh, serving data. We're going to maybe look at what the, the reason we are serving this data is. Uh, but for the next seven minutes, we're going to try not to say too much about that because I am uh, that would be cheating and unfair to the people who are actually going to be here on time, which is no one. But, you know, sometimes you just have to be uh, unfair or fair to no one. So um, no one here yet unless... The, the list of users is not actually 100% accurate all the time, so it's quite possible someone has joined me. Um, in which case, thank you. Um, you're one of the very few who are privileged to join. Um, or not privileged. Uh, I, you know, you're one of the very few who are joining the chat. Uh, it will suck up your life and you will not like it. But, <laughs> you know, thank you anyway. Thank you for letting me screw you. Um, Okay, so again, I don't really want to get too much into this. Uh, there is a previous video that is listed in the Twitch uh, profile, uh, how we got to the point we are right now. Uh, but uh, but uh, again, um, wow, I, I have no idea how to kill five and a half minutes. Uh, I'll do some powder. Okay, well, uh, it's, we're broadcasting from the heart of, not really the heart, sort of the spleen of Albuquerque, New Mexico. It's about 55 degrees outside. 38% humidity, which is always low, dew point of 30, which as always means that our uh, cold beverages do not sweat, they do not uh, condense. Uh, boy, that's boring. Um, 43 at the airport, so uh, that was at 8.52 a.m. It'll probably get updated shortly. Um, it's 9.55 a.m. here in Albuquerque. And if someone wants to say something in chat just to break the frickin' boredom, that'd be fantastic. Um, it's 9.55 in Albuquerque and around the world. The earliest time zone right now is uh, the American Samoa, where it's only 5.55 in the morning. Latest time zone is Western Samoa, which is just really very close to its borders, American Samoa. But they've decided to go on the other side of the American of the uh, international dateline. For them, it is 6.55 in the morning tomorrow, Sunday. Um, so that was fairly uninteresting. Um... Okay, well, let's see. Um, maybe I'll just do some more prepping on what we're going to do today. Today we're actually going to look at some actual data that we, we're going to serve. Nope, I don't want to say that because I want to say that when we're live on the stream. I don't want to say it ahead of time. So pretend I didn't say that. La 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 la. Okay, that's, uh, that was the odd couple theme, by the way. Um... So, so being fair here, I actually did an event to announce this, although Twitch events are going away, so that was probably um, not a great decision on my part, not that I necessarily make good decisions ever, um, but I thought I'd try using that feature. I, did, I guess I don't know how we're going to announce events in the future. Maybe they'll just let you announce using your own social media stuff. So, yep, definitely started this stream a little bit too early. Um, so if, if, if there is anyone in chat and you have any questions about me, ask them. I won't answer them, but, you know, I might answer them if I want to, but, but whatever. Uh, if you want, just you can look at this wonderful, um, just look at this wonderful code. You can join the Replit. Uh, there is a URL at the top. You are welcome to join it. And if you want right access to it, uh, and this time I'm just repeating what's in the panels below, so it's not new information. If you want right access to this Replit, just let me know and I will give it to you, uh, probably. Um... And if you want to talk with me live on Discord, let me know and we can set that up as well. Um, but if you just want to watch quietly, listen quietly, go and chat, or as 99.99999% of the world is doing, totally ignore the stream, that's fine too. So let me see something here real quickly. I am trying to keep an eye on my video preview to make sure it looks okay, and it does look okay, so I'm fairly happy with that. Um... I guess we can look at some of the other files while we're doing this. 
if you don't have if you're not on the replit itself, in which case you can look at whatever file you want. Didn't mean to look at that one. Hmm, this one should be quite a bit shorter. Yeah, this of course being the key file here is the is the index file. Um so I'm doing pretty well. Um, you know, I'm doing okay for old man. Um, not dead yet, which is good, because if I were, this would be a zombie stream. Uh, and zombies don't really speak that well, so it would be pretty... I can't believe I'm going to actually probably leave this on the YouTube. Um, if you are watching this on YouTube and haven't already done so, you might want to fast forward to like about, f you know, five or six minutes into the stream, um, because I guess there's no way for you to know that this was recorded starting at 9.54 a.m., which is six minutes early, so I've got to do six minutes of patter to uh, to fill this out. So really sorry about that. Uh, bad decision on my part. Next time I will try not to start the stream uh, too early. I'll probably start it two minutes early, which should be enough to, to get things um, get things uh, started without uh, necessarily having to kill so much time. Okay, I've got about 50 seconds left, so... Um, 50 seconds, and you know, the second is a certain number of vibrations of a element, but uh, I was going to tell you how many, but I don't really care. Um, so there's that. So if you're listening live, which you're probably not, just chill for another 28 seconds. If you're listening on YouTube, you can probably just fast forward the 28 seconds, or you can listen to this, because, you know, my patter is just amazingly poor. It might put you to sleep. It might kill you. Probably won't, but it could, in theory, kill you. Okay, so let's count down. I'm not going to count it down. I was. Didn't want to. Whatever. Um, eight seconds left. And I'm not getting... Well, let's see if I'm getting any sort of responses here. I got one response in the Repit server. Thank you. Um, and it is now 10 a.m., so I can now officially stream without having uh, annoyed anyone, the no one who doesn't want, doesn't really care. Okay, so today what we're going to do is we're going to actually look at some real data. I'm going to make a correction to something I said yesterday. More of a, not really a correction, but more of a, an accuracy issue uh, that we need to take a look at in README. And README is actually not the README for this. It, this is more like just sort of notes. So I'm going to rename it to notes, uh, which is the more correct uh, sort of thing to say here. Okay, so I'm going to actually, um, let's see. I'm going to start down here, and I'm going to put down today's date which is uh, the 9th of November 2019, just so we have know where we're breaking. And I'm going to be a little bit clearer about how we uh, look at data in a file. Um, and because yesterday I sort of was talking about this one half thing, and it might not be clear what that is exactly, so I'd like to explain that. So let's consider a very simple uh, data file uh, that uh, just has values for latitudes only uh, for 90 degrees north to minus to 90 degrees south, which is another way of saying mi minus 90 degrees. So this data you would have like 180 data points, because there's 180 degrees of latitude, and you would probably think that the data, the first line of data, or the first, you know, byte of data, or the first line of data, would be for 90 uh, degrees north, then 89 degrees north, then 88 degrees north, then 87 degrees north, and so on, until you got down to minus 90 degrees north. W w sorry, minus 90 degrees which is minus 90 degrees north, which is, of course, the South Pole. This actually doesn't happen, and f because how many numbers are there between ni minus 90 and 90? Well, the answer seems to be 180, but that's not actually what it is. So let's ask how many numbers are there between, let's say, 12 and, four and 15. You might think the number is, the quantity is 3, but it's actually not. So let's actually take a look here we see that the number is 4, not 3. Now, if we omit the first number, or we omit the last number, we do get three elements. And if we omit both numbers, both the first and last number, we get two elements. So this is a, called a fence post condition. And it is important, and it is the reason we need to uh, fix our formulas here. Um, so the general rule is uh, quantity, cardinality, no, we'll say quantity, of numbers between 
a and b is uh, with a, you know, I'm not going to even say uh, b greater than a. b minus a plus 1 if you include both. b minus a, exactly, if you include one, not the other. And, oh nice, uh, does a little bit of tapping for me. b minus a minus 1 if you uh, include neither. So how is that going to affect us? Well, first of all, if you have a data set where the that has 180 elements between, you know, plus 90 and minus 90, whichever direction you're going, the data points aren't actually going to be 90, 89, 88, and so forth. That is sort of the the boundaries of the data points, but the actual data will be 89.5, 88.5, 87.5, all the way down to minus 89.5. And that is going to be 180 points of, of data exactly, because 89.5 minus, minus, plus 1 is 180, I hope, because I didn't really do the math there, but 89.5 plus 89.5 um, is going to be 90 times 2 minus 1, which is 179, then you add the 180. Okay, so that is that is the um, that is something I was having trouble with yesterday that we do need to fix the formula on. So what we're going to be looking at now, in general, for these files that have data, um, to find the row number, we're going to take the, um, or actually this is true of um, this is actually true of any sort of structured data. So we don't even really need to say rows and columns. We'll say the element is the max, well let's go ahead and we're going to do it for latitude, but it's going to be the same for for um, for longitude. So we're going to start out by saying that if you're on element number i, what you're looking at is, well the max val, this is the maximum value for example 90 degrees north for which the data is defined, minus i over, nope that's absolutely wrong, minus i, m minus, wow, well, apparently I don't know what I'm doing, um, looking at element i, we're looking at the max val, minus, I'm sorry, and we have a delta, meaning that's the difference between successive uh, columns or pieces of data, we'll just call that, uh, you know, the difference between, um, between pieces of data. So actually, I don't, I'm going to be really ghetto because I'm stupid, not because I, I'm trying to be educational here. Um, the very first piece of data we have, if if max is like the uh, sort of maximum value, so because when we have data that says it goes from uh, plus 90 degrees to minus 90 degrees, it actually goes from, as we've seen, and, it, and the resolution is one degree, it actually goes from 89.5 to minus 89.5. However, the convention is to say that it goes from 90 to minus 90. In other words, we, we use the, the sort of the top left corner of the data to define where it goes from. We do not actually say the first cell is halfway in the first, uh, halfway down the, the delta value. So row 1, which we call calls row 0, and that is actually, we're going to go 0 indexed here, is going to be the max minus delta over 2. And that's as we saw because the max value refers to the sort of the top of the cell and the middle of the row where the actual data is is max minus delta. So here we have ma max minus delta minus delta over 2 and we're going to very quickly hopefully see a pattern minus 2 times delta minus delta over 2. So the pattern here is row i goes to max minus i plus, well, am I doing this right? Yeah, minus, minus two and a half, yeah, i plus one half times delta. And I'm going to make a stupid comment now because I want to pad out the stream. Uh, of course, in most programming languages, one half will get changed to a floating point number. The only reason I sometimes do it like this is because Mathematica and other symbolic manipulators will actually keep one half uh, as a pure value. And if you're combining a lot of complicated formulas, uh, it can actually do some rational simplification which is nice. So I will keep it like this, but again, we see that that's not a huge uh, issue. So this basically says if you know you have data and you know what the maximum value of that data is 
and you know what the delta is, and the data is going downwards, which um, which actually is going to only happen for latitude. For longitude, the data is going to be going upwards, but that's not a huge deal, um, be because we can make the uh, the delta negative, or we can make the delta negative here and make it positive for longitude. But either way, it's not it's not a huge deal. Um, so this is our formula that, that translates from row number, or rather, you know, element number, to um, to the number. Okay, I'm going to be obnoxious. I'm going to change this around. I'm going to make it. Um, I actually want to do it. Uh, so the ele the first one, we're going to go with delta being negative because. Uh, as you go forward in the data, we are actually getting lower values of latitude, so it's really correct in latitude to use a negative delta. Uh, in the longitude, we will use a positive delta because we're going from minus 180 positive-wise to 180. Um, so here, I mean, it's just going to be max plus delta plus delta over 2 and so on. So the formula is going to be that the ith element of data represents exactly... Um, that, where i starts at 0. So at 0, this is max plus half delta, and so on down the line. Now, we want to go the other way as well. Um, we know that, uh, so the uh, so the latitude, sorry, sorry, the data represented by element i is this, but now the question we can ask is, um, if we know what the data is equal to, can we get back to uh, what, in other words, if we want to know where like 88 degree data is, can we get back to what I was? And the answer is, of course, we can using algebra. Um, it's actually not that bad. So what we want to say is now we know that max plus i over 2 delta equals um, <laughs> data of i. I want to say x here. But that's not because I don't right. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, correct. This is you know this is the data for the value of x. We want to solve for i. I is the sort of element that we need here. And uh, I'm just going to sort of cheat a little bit here. It's going to be x plus max. Nope, nope, nope. It's not. It's going to be x minus max um, over delta minus one half. I'm I'm pretty sure that's right. Uh, that's how you solve for for uh, for uh, for which row the the data you would expect to find is. So, for example, suppose I wanted to look at the data for 90 degrees, and I was looking at 90 degrees as my max. This would be 90 minus zero, which is zero over delta, which doesn't matter, minus one half, and that is actually correct because the data for 90 degrees is not really in the data set. The highest value in the data set, as as we discussed earlier, is 89.5. So if we're looking for a degree 90 data, we are really looking outside the data. Uh, if I was looking for 88 data, 88 minus 90 would be minus 2, over the delta here being 1 degree. Um, so that would be minus 2 minus 1 half, which is minus 2.5. And that, again, is correct, because the top data is 89.5. That's row 0 of data. Row 1 of data is, um, is going to be... 88.5, so 88 is going to be sort of row 1.5 of data. So I think I just messed that up. Let me let me do that again. Let me go ahead and do it correctly. So 88 minus 90 over delta minus one half, and that is minus two minus one half, which is yeah, that's not good. I messed something up here. Okay, so I have no idea what I'm doing. X minus max over delta... Oh, right, I'm sorry. Because in our case, we're using a negative delta because our data is... the latitude values decrease as we go forward. So in this case, I'm sorry, this would actually be minus 2 divided by minus 1, which is 2, minus 1 half, which is 1.5. And that is exactly where, uh, if the data existed within the data set, that's where we'd expect to find it. So it would be between the first and second, the second and third rows, because we are zero indexing. Let me do a, cl a clearer example. Suppose we wanted the data for 75.5 lat, which should be in the data, it, which should be in the uh, our records, because our records are giving us every uh, one half offset from every latitude. So here, boy, I hope I do this right. 
over our delta, which is minus 1, minus 1 half, is equal to... Boy, I really wish I knew what I was doing. Um, so that's going to be equal to... 90 minus 75, you, you kind of wish you knew. I think it's 15, uh, 14.5, and that is correct. 14.5 minus 1 half, which is the 14th row of data. So 75.5 would be the 14th row of data, and that does seem correct. Um, and just to make sure, we could put out 89.5 in here, get minus 0.5 over minus 1, which is half, minus 1 half is 0, which tells us correctly that 89.5 latitude is at the 0th element. So what we need to do is actually we need to, we need to put this formula uh, into, our, into our library. I'm not sure what we're going to call it. Um, it's really a form of scaling data. And let's see, so I might actually have this in BC Lib staging or something very similar to this. I'm going to look for the word scale. Um, tile pixels to distance. No, that's weird. And it might be, I don't think it's in the real one either. I don't think we'll have to add this function. Yay, no results. Okay, so let's go over here and we're going to add this function. Um, So this is going to be a function that's going to end up helping this function. I sort of wrote this function ugly with all these 0.5s in it. Um, and that, I think, is too ugly. It's correct, but it's ugly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a helper function that makes this function, function get data from file, easier to, to write. And, and, and also, there's less risk of error. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, Scale max. This is a horrible name for it, but um, I don't want to use a function. I want, don't want to use a function name like scale or something else that might somebody else might be using. Scale max delta should be a pretty decent way of uh, of uh, actually. Let me let me let me follow my convention here. So with, let's start off with a function that uh, takes the um, the data and converts it to row to a element number. And here. Here, we can actually be really... I'm going to use a name so ugly no one else is going to use it. And the, like all my functions, it's going to take an object. And let's see what we want the input object to be. So what we're going to be inputting here... Um, I, the data um, value to convert to element number... max the row zero value of the data. Well, actually, it's the data value of the zeroth row. This would be the top data we have, adjusted by a little bit of a half sort of thing. Delta, the difference between adjacent data values, um, data input values. Okay, so this is not going to be a very hard thing to do. Um, return, um, the floating point, and again, we're going to return a floating point number here. We will do any rounding or rounding up or down that we need in the calling program because we want to be very exact here. So the floating point value of which element of where the data would be found. And of course, if it's an integer, that's great. That's the actual value. If it's not, it, it, we won't necessarily interpolate, but we at least know it's between two data values. So here, we can use the, uh, the notes we had here. Um, and let's see, which one of these converts from... This converts from the, uh, the row number, which I shouldn't call it that, the element number, to the data. And this converts from the data back to the element number. So, pretty simple there. And, of course, this is... X, in this case, is I. Actually, that's, that's a really bad decision to do that, because I, I'll just call it data. Uh, the data, so we do that, minus, and that's object data, of course, minus object max, 
over object delta minus one half. This probably is not going to work. We're going to test it in just a second. And then we just return the object. So this is a convention I use. I don't know if you should use it. You probably shouldn't, right? because anything I do is pretty bad. But this is actually a really easy way of doing it, so I'll do it this way. Now let's test to see if we are uh, if this works. And if it does, we'll write the reverse function, which forces elt number to data. So let's see if we can get it uh, all the way over here. Now remember, uh, JavaScript does not have a die function. Um, but if it encounters an instruction it doesn't know how to handle, it will stop. So putting die there effectively stops the program there, even though it's not really the equivalent of die in other languages. Okay, so now we will see, we'll probably do a little loop thing here. Data to L to data max delta. Data max delta. This is just notes to remind myself what I'm doing here. Okay, so console log data to elt num. Let's test the base case first. Um, if our data is 90, our max is 90, and our elt is 1, I mean our delta is 1, what we would expect here is... I think we can get these now. What we'd expect here is that uh, we will get a minus 0.5, because we're looking for data that is above the top of where the data actually is. Let's see what that does. And apparently, Replit has to compile stuff. Well, good for Replit. Um, and and there you see that ELT is minus 0.5, the thing that gets returned. Of course, we return the whole object, but but there we go. Okay, so now let's be a little bit more. Uh, let's test this a little bit more harshly. Okay, so let's say we want to know where the 75 element is. The max is 90, which is fairly typical. And in this case, we have, uh, this is going to be interesting, we have delta of 0.5. So that actually means the very top entry will not be 89.5, it'll be 89.75. Um, uh, because, again, the half degree doesn't mean we're hitting right on the integers, or even on the half integers, it's hitting on the quarter of the integers here. So let's do this. And element minus 30.5 seems promising. Uh, I don't know if it's right. So let's actually go ahead and be really clever and do a for loop. So we've got to be careful here. Uh, we're going to start by asking for the uh, value at 90 degrees, which should be minus point. It, should, it shouldn't be something that we actually want. Um, this is probably going to be too long, but and then we want to stop when uh, when i gets to be less than minus 90. So let's. And if I'm going to do this, I might as well console log the actual value of i. And data there. And so, so let's see what this does. And I hate the fact that Replit automatically does close stuff for me. But it does, and there's nothing I can do about that. Okay, let's run this. And this actually will help us see that um, this will be more consistent here. So... Uh, so at 80, why am I starting at 89? I goes up 90, I minus minus. Yes. So I, I think that's why I is greater than or equal to. I'm surprised that actually ran, but anyway. Okay. Okay, I have no idea why it's starting at 89, so I'm unhappy now. Yes, because of course I have no idea what the hell I'm doing, this should be... Wow, fairly simple error there, I figured I fucked up this, the for loop. Okay, there we go. Okay, so 90 degrees, the, um, the, the element is minus 0.5, uh, and this is actually a good example. I screwed this up because I said delta is 0.5, but if we're starting at 90 and going down, we're going to make our delta to be minus 0.5. So, see how that works. Okay, 90th uh, element is above. Okay, great. 88, 89. Um, because the top element is 89.75, that's the 0th element. 89.25, uh, 
would be the element with row 1, so it does sort of seem reasonable that the element 1.5 will be 89. But you know what, we're going to actually be a little bit more clever than that. Um, let's try to look at the data. We're, we're actually going to hit it, which is going to be at plus 0 0.025. Um, nope, don't want to do it that way. So let's actually start at 89.25, work our way down. And here we should actually be hitting exact data lines. So before we do it, let's see what results we expect. Uh, zeroth line, 89.75. First line, 89.25. So next line will be 88.75, which we're not looking at. Next line after that, 88.25. So we should see like a 1, 3, 5, the odd number patterns here. Let's see if that actually happens. And it looks like that worked. Okay, so we have some confidence this is actually doing what we want. Let's have a little bit more confidence by looking at the 0.75, the other point data is defined. Now the very top row is 89.75, so 89.75, we'll expect zero, then we'll expect the even numbers to come up. And it looks like that happened, but let's check. Yes, very nice, the even numbers starting with zero, going all the way down. So now that we have this going, let's go ahead and write the reverse function. Uh, which is basically going to say that if you um, if you want to know what's in element row number 17, well, what is that data? So again, this is actually uh, okay. So yeah, I don't want to really write another function for this, um, but I think it might be easier to actually do that. I'm probably breaking JavaScript doc conventions by doing this. Function elt num to data. And here we'll expect elt to be part of the input, so we're going to assign data to be equal to whatever the hell we put in notes. The sucker. And by the way, we c one thing we can do by t is testing is, of course, we can run both the functions on top of each other and see if that uh, see if that gives us back our original value. And we can do that in both orders, of course. Um, and that actually is one reason I probably shouldn't be doing what I'm doing here. So what did I do here? Did I actually add like an R or something to my data? Yes, I did. Modified. So I'm going to say... I'm not going to return exactly ELT and data because that's what I expect as input. Um, no, it's not modified. Return ELT. So that's the return value of ELT. And then over here we will say object return data is equal to this is just object max. And we're going to put this here in just a second. Plus um, object I, I think it's going to be, or what? No, it's going to be object ELT over object times object uh, delta. So let's get these numbers in here going to be very s similar. Gotta love it. Input object is going to be um, is st it's still going to have the the max and the delta because those are those are sort of independent of which direction you're going in. So we'll just put that in there. And in this case, the input uh, value will be ELT, the element number we're trying to convert to data. And I'm almost wishing I had said rows instead of element numbers, because it really, it really does work both ways, but uh, to data. Okay? And the return is the, well, you know, return our data the value of the data at ELT. Seems pretty simple. And then, oops, I do need to return my OBJ. Okay. Okay, let's watch this not work. Because I'm not very confident in this. So... Okay. I'm going to go for broke here and just console log i of this thing. 
Well, actually, I can't quite do that. Okay. So, why don't we... So, because we know our data has 360 elements, because from 90 to minus 90 in half degree steps is 180 elements, we'll say i less than or equal to 180, i plus plus, and this actually should be a little bit easier to uh, to test. Console log i elt to elt num. Does it actually do this for me? <laughs> no. Uh, and of course I can't just say object, I need to actually define my object. So the elt num is going to be i. Max is 90, delta is minus 0.5. So assuming I haven't screwed anything up, um, which I have, and because this is the one around console log, let's see what this does. Okay, hang on. So this ends the object, this ends the elt, this ends the console log. And did I just get the function name wrong? Elt num to data, that should be fine. Unless I've done something much, much... Oh, elt num to data is not defined. Yep, because I forgot the camel case. Okay, and let's see if this tells us what our... Okay, so like we said, 89.75, then 89.25, 88.75, and so on down the line. Okay, so... Ugly functions, which I might have been able to combine but really useful because now we can go back to um, now we can go back and re rewrite this um, get data from file which doesn't actually return any data by the way uh, it might at some point um, so row one is going to be basically just um, So we're going to be converting the input data, which is the north lat. So this is going to be data to elt num. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's kind of nice, actually. It's not super nice, mind you. Maybe I should have used that format, but anyway. Okay, so what we're going to be converting here is going to be the north latitude. And our max is going to be... How are we defining that here? Okay, I think uh, input object parameters. Lat res, lat res. Um, and that, those are going to be our deltas, by the way. Um, and max lat. Maximum value of latitude, which it actually isn't because we have a halfway adjustment, but we understand what we mean. I'm not going to put in a min and min, uh, max lon, although we can do that later, um, because usually that just goes from minus 180 to 180, and we can pretty much trust it to be that. Um, so for max lat, and our latitude and our delta is going to be our negative of our latitude re resolution, because our latitude... Um, yeah, our resolution is going to be a positive number, but we're going in decreasing latitude order, so it is going to be a, uh, this is going to be a negative. Uh, the delta is negative because we're going downwards in latitude. Okay, now I'm going to console log this. We're going to see several problems showing up here. Um, uh, if we're going to go back over here now, let's get rid of these two or loops. I'm tempted to use this notice notification here. Okay, and do that. Okay. And so I think we're just going to be debugging, so I probably want to add something that says we're just debugging. Let's run this, see what happens. Uh, 
Um, okay. Not what I expected. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Let's see. So this takes an object as input. Should be returning an object as its output, unless I screwed something up. Let row one. Oh, wow. NLAT is not defined. Of course it's not, because it's object NLAT. I'm beginning to suspect that this is maybe not the best way to do things, but... Uh, because for simple functions, this may not actually be a great idea. Um, so back here, though, we now need to say SLAT, NORTHLAT, that's what we want, West Long, okay. And longitude resolution, not res. And I, I should probably say... We might at some point want to say that max that is 90 if we don't actually specify it. Um, and there is a way to do that. And why don't we just add that for right now as a... Uh, um, assume max lat equals 90 if not defined. But for right now we will require them to, 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 to define it. Okay, 93rd billionth times the charm. Okay, so row one, um, data 31 max delta, and the thing, the return element is, it's the 491th element, going all the way down to the, okay, uh, what the hell's wrong with this one? Max undefined? Hmm. Let me do an early abort here. And we don't really need to return anything. Okay, row one, 30.2. Oh, that's right, because when I give the, uh, the... Am I doing this call? Okay, right, because in the second call, I also need to say max that is 90. So that should fix that. Okay, things are pretty ugly right now, but I'm going to go ahead and do a, a zip download, because we sort of have stuff working. Uh, this probably looks more complicated than it needs to be, uh, and it is. But at some point, we will hopefully see the value of doing things uh, by wrapping them in objects. So one of the nice things is we can add parameters later if we want. I will show you how we can actually also put default parameters fairly easy uh, using a function I've already written. Um, so this basically says we are looking for rows 491 to 498.5, which, of course, we have to adjust for. There's going to be another adjustment we need to do, which is going to be really ugly. But let's go ahead and go back over here for right now. Um, so what we really want for row 1, we don't really care about most of the values here. We just want to know what the uh, R ELT is. Now, I don't know if that this is going to work. I don't know if I can do something quite this ugly. Yes, I can. That's awesome. Okay. Um, and since we know we have to floor row 1, let's just Let's go functional badass on this and just do this. There's going to be one issue here that I'm going to show you in just a sec. Okay, so this basically says we're going to start getting our data at row 491 and getting our data... No. No, right, right. For the second request, row 1 will be 498. Now, when we do it for the row 2, we're going to have to flip that and use the, 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 the ceiling because we want to get, uh, we want to get the whole cell that it's, the data is in. We want to go further than the request. So what's going to be wrong with this? Well, let's go crazy here. I'm going to just do another request. And, well, suppose we wanted more data. Suppose we wanted actually all the data from minus 90 to 90. A little chunk of latitude. It doesn't really matter what our longitude is, but, you know, whatever. Uh, with a max lat of 90 and our resolution in latitude to be 0.12, uh, which means we have quite a few data points. Actually, this might not be a multiple, which, which is an issue, but it's not really an issue. Okay. So you can see that the row is minus 1. And of course, we can't we can't use minus 1 as a uh, as our as there's no row the row start at 0. So so what we have to do here is um the other issue we're going to run into is if the row number is higher than the number of data elements, uh, which which is going to be tough to test, actually. 
Um, okay. So we're in this for quite some time, and I guess I have not um, actually shown you any real data yet, so it kind of sucks. Um, So what we want to do is compute the number of rows given the maximum latitude and, oh, actually this is ugly. We don't, because we don't really know what the last row is going to be. Because um, we don't know where the bottom of the of the latitude, we don't know the max latitude, we don't know the min latitude. Uh, so let's handle it the way we handle most things like this, ignore it. We will not ignore, however, the fact that we can get a zero value here. And for this we're going to say, um, we want the maximum of zero in this number. And I'm a functional programmer, so this terrible person for doing this. And now, if it is below zero, we'll just get back zero, because that is really what we sort of need to do. And to be honest with you, I think this is a, um, this is really, really ugly. So I'm not really happy with this. I thought it would look better than this. Um, I thought this was clean up this function. It actually hasn't. Um, but anyway, um, boy, um, well, let's go ahead and do row two now. Maybe it'll look better for the, um, for the longitudinal values. Now in this case, we don't need to use, um, math max because we're assuming that the road that whatever road number is returned to us will actually exist in the data if it doesn't we're going to end up looking off the edge of the file which actually might be okay because we can actually check for that condition to see if we're trying to look off the edge of the file um, and if you think about it we could actually do that for row one as well in fact should we do well I don't really want to be looking at um, I don't really want to be looking, I don't really want to be looking negative in the stream because it might think of that as like move the position currently or whatever. So that I'm going to ignore, but the maximum value I'm going to let it handle this way. Okay, so we want to convert the given data, which is our uh, south southern latitude, um, given that we have a max latitude, and a delta value. and maybe that would be okay. And in this case, again, our our delta value is, of course, the resolution and latitude going in the negative direction. Because again, this, these are, we're looking at rows for right now. And again, we really only want out of this the R else. Um, and let's boogie on with this. I do a lot of testing while programming, which maybe wastes time, but whatever. Um, okay, once again, let's see. Math ceiling data to element. Um, yeah, my math ceiling actually probably needs a. There. The ceiling is after we take the R else out of it. Okay, data to element, data, object, slat. Oh. Undefined 101. So it doesn't like this for some reason, even though this looks fine. Math ceiling of all this. Syntax error. Oh, has already been declared. Really? Oh, I think this is unhappy with this. Because I can't really declare row 2 twice. Okay, so this says 0 to 1500, which is actually sort of a almost reasonable number for if we're looking at all of the data from mi uh, minus 90 to plus 90, but it's not actually because that's this, as we discussed earlier, it's 1501 rows. Um, so I probably will, and again, this just means we're going to end up looking off the edge of the data, off the edge of the file. I really want to avoid that, though. So, and it's, it's going to be a different problem for longitude. So that's that's going to be uh, an issue as well. Um, so I'm not quite sure how to handle that. 
Um, and we're going to cheat for right now. Check boundary conditions. So this is a pretty bad stream, I would say. This is actually fairly ugly, what I'm doing here. Um, but we might as well finish with this. I'm trying to see if there's a way to make um, this function here data to elt number more useful instead of not doing all of this stuff. Okay. And let's see, so this is the data you want to convert, the maximum value, the delta value. Um, and we could have some like a parameter like floor or ceiling to decide if we want the floor or the ceiling, and we could send in a parameter like bounds so that if this value turns out to be lower than zero or higher than the possible highest row value possible, it will just return, um, it'll just return the highest row value possible or the or zero for the lowest row possible. So let's maybe do that um, because we're putting too much garbage into the main function, and this there's no reason we can't just do this here. So the data value, uh, the data value to convert the max zero and the delta, um, if set to true, well we're not going to say that. Um, bound result between zero and max value. Max, and we will see how to calculate that. Um, floor, if set, return floor of value. Seal, if set, return ceiling of value. And by the way, the bounds check is going to have to come after floor or ceiling. So here we have this. So this is the raw computation. If um, and this is just a true or false value, we don't need to say equal, equal, true. If object bounds, so we want to, you know, let's go ahead and compute the max number of rows here, because we, we probably, we don't really need it all the time. Um, actually, just give me the number of rows. Okay, so the number of rows here is going to be uh, the, uh, uh, The um, yeah, the problem is we don't know how many um, we don't know how many rows the input data has because we don't know the the min value. Uh, well, I'm gonna make this a little. Oh, do I really want to do this? Um. I'm going to put it in the plus minus one half because I'm again we're when we say we have data from negative ninety to ninety, it's actually from minus eighty nine point five to eighty nine point five if if we have a one degree resolution, um, so we're not really getting the max and the min. So let's go ahead and do this. We can require a min value, which is probably not a huge badness. Um, so the number of data elements here is going to be object min minus object max minus object min over delta and if we're if our values are decreasing delta will be negative uh, but that's okay because max will be greater than min no 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 let's see I think I actually want object min minus object max over delta and I'm not sure if this is exactly right we might need a plus or a minus one here so let's just do a quick calculation. Let's say the minimum data was minus 90, the maximum was plus 90, and our delta was minus one degree, which means we would expect there to be 180 rows. So this would give us minus 90, uh, minus 90, minus minus 90, really? Which is zero. Mm, something's wrong here. Minus 90. I think I actually do want, uh, no, no, actually, minus 90 minus 90, which is minus 180, over minus 1, which is 180. So this is exactly what we want. This is the, um, no, it's not. So this gives us 180, but, which is actually the number of rows, but that's not what we really want, of course. We want the last row index, which is this minus 1. 
So in other words, if we had 180 chunks of data, we would number them 0 to 179. So the last row index is going to be uh, min minus max over delta, but they have to do a minus 1 uh, because we, uh, we, it's a fence post condition, essentially. Okay. So now... So now we assign the return value of ELT, but now we have to do some checks. If object bounds, and we have to do this check first, and um, I actually have a function called bound, so I don't know if I really should be using it, but because um, I, I sometimes get over bounds equals blah, 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 blah. Function bound. No. Here. Bound number. And that will bound a number between two values. So let me just copy the signature. Get back over here. Um, And bound number is one of the few uh, things I've written that doesn't require an object, it, and that mm, I don't know if that's good or bad. I'm just not even gonna. I'm just not gonna care. So it's gonna take the value we get, and the left-hand bound is going to be zero, and the right-hand bound is going to be the last row index. So it'll never. So this will never return something that's out of, out of the the range of possible values. Um, Except I'm lying about that. No, because we actually want to allow it to return minus 0.5 to represent the very top of the data and the last value plus 0.5 to represent the bottom of the data. Um, yes, so this should... Nope, 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 nope. Nope, we will do this. I, I'm, I was concerned that the floor or ceiling would break this, but since we're actually using integers, uh, this is not going to be a huge deal for us. Okay. So if we're requesting, uh, if we're requesting that the data be bounded, It'll be bound to something that is uh, between zero and the last row index, uh, which means, but of course, this isn't necessarily requiring floor or ceiling. Um, so it's not doesn't have to be an integer, but it does have to be between zero and the last row index. So it's actually going to return something that's within the real value of the data we have. So if we had minus ninety to ninety, this will represent. This will show you where. Um, Row zero is the earliest it can return, which is 89.5. The last row is eight minus 89.5. So it, it will won't return data outside the actual values the, the the data can take. All right. If object floor, uh, this is pretty simple. And if object seal we'll just return the ceiling of that value. And um, because of our bounds here, we could never return something that's lower than zero or higher than the maximum value, unless there's some floating number buggery. Um, but I'm going to assume there won't be for integers, because these are hard integers. They're not floating point numbers. OK, so now let's wait for Replit to reload. Very nice. Thank you, Replit. Um, and it brought me back to the top here. We will need to make the same changes to elt num to data. Actually, we, we might not, because elt num to data does something a little bit different. Okay, so let's, um, so here, let's make this a little bit easier. We want to convert data to elt num, with our data being the object's north latitude. Um, the max being the object's max. La, 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 la. Oh, brother. Okay.
Um, yeah, the minimum value of latitude. Uh, this is sort of ugly now, but okay. Um, and we do want the floor here. So let's see if that does what we want. Of course, it has to redo its magic here. This is just replic garbage. Undefined 40. That's not at all what we wanted. Delta is not defined. Mm, you're right. I have not given it a... And now that I think about it, the way we're calling this, we're not even defining a uh, minlat. So let's go back here and define our minlat. Yeah, I think this is probably one of the... Okay, that didn't help. Now, it, there would be nice if there was sort of a using object which made I could say delta to mean obj delta. Um, and at this point, you probably don't see why it's actually valuable to um, to even do any of this in, in, in object form and all this. It does have benefits in other places. It will, hopefully, I will be able to show you that. Okay. Um, data undefined. That's probably okay because that's what we're looking for. Relt is not a number. Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, um, let's see. So, am I not sending data correctly? Am I sending data as lat instead of data? No, nope, I'm sending it correctly. Data is obj lat. Uh, I'm sorry, it's object north lat, because we're trying to convert the north latitude. So there we have uh, data of 90 minus the... the Rel value is zero, which is correct. Uh, and then we could, and this is still really ugly, so I don't really know why I wanted to do this. Um, so now row two, we're going to get the, um, oh, actually, we only want one thing out of this, which is the rel. We don't want the whole data. And since we've said bounds and floor, we don't have to integerize this. We, we know this is going to be correct. So now, why the hell did that delete when I just did control C, control V? But anyway, row two is going to be the same thing, except we will want ceiling instead of floor. Um, and again, because our bounds are coming, our bounds better be coming after Oh dear. Um, right, this isn't actually going to hurt anything because our we can never have a value that's higher than the ceiling value because our um, we we are using a floor here. So anyway, um, data south latitude object, and we just want the relative of this. We don't even need to do a ceiling here. So I promised you some real data, didn't I? <laughs> I lied. Um, object max lat. Oh yeah, we need a min, don't we? Fun stuff. We will actually find see a way to combine objects, which makes this a little less painful than it than it than it is right here. Data. Row 2 has already been declared. Yep. Once again. Oh. Why am I messing with this? Okay. Let's see what that does. Row 1, 0. Row 2, 1499, which is exactly what we want. Uh, then 490 to 500, 488 to 500. 
So now we need to correct the uh, column numbers to do what we want here. Um, so the we convert the column is the data is going to be, for example, the western latitude. The the min and max here are always, you know, almost always going to be the data is going to go from minus 180 to 180. The delta is going to be the object's longitudinal resolution. And what else do I need here? Oh yeah. And we do of course want and we want for the column 1 we want floor to be true. Okay. And then we can't wait to clear it twice, so we do this. And column two, the other end of the spectrum. Wow, okay, I think I know I did that, but not really important. Call two is going to be the eastern latitude. Again, we're going from minus 180 to 180. Um, and this time we will want the ceiling value. And let's print that out. What this does hopefully something useful. Call to has already been the yes it has. Try it that way. W lat uh, of course is not defined because it's going to be object W lat. Maybe I should just call these things like O or something to avoid this problem. And I just said east lat and west, I meant, of course, west longitude and east longitude. The latitudes are something else entirely. Let's do that. And once again, I only really care about the value, not the whole object. So, so this is ugly. Um, not correct. Call one minus three thousand one. Call two. Uh, this is just hideous, isn't it? Um, let me see what we've done wrong here. Object longitude resolution bounds for and get the relt out of this. So this is bad at many levels because it actually call one and call two should be different and they should be positive. So this is not looking too good here. So the min to the max. The only thing I'm thinking is maybe I set long res, res to be negative, but I really shouldn't have done that. Um, no, it's positive. Um, okay, fantastic. How am I breaking this? Well, let's go back up here. Do this. And last row index minus minus. So if this were latitude, this would be minus 90. Minus 90, but the delta would be negative, so this is okay. Um, for a longitude, the min is minus 180. Minus. Okay. I think I see what's wrong. The, um, no, that should be fine. Uh, minus 180, minus 180 is minus 360, and then our delta is 1. So, should this be max minus min, 90 minus minus 90, 180 over negative 1, uh, that's not going to work either. Okay, so clearly the problem is somewhere in here. Um, I could put an absolute value here and just be rid of the problem, but I want to see what's actually going on here. Um, so the last row index, we want the max minus the min. Oh, you know what? I think I think this actually just has to be absolute value. I am, I know, I'm being a dork. But it's basically how big the data set is. Um, and I think the problem is, yeah, okay, actually, I think even object delta, it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. So let's see if we can put the max there. And then the minus one actually does have to come after that. So what this does, call one, well, that's better than what we had before. 
Um, and this should really be last elt index. Boy. Uh, I'm probably going to rewrite this to just use save rows because that's how I'm thinking. Um, so the data minus the max over the delta. Pretty sure that should be minus the min over delta. That looks more promising for the longitudes. It does not look at all promising for the latitudes. So the object min here is minus 90. Yeah, I think there's something fundamentally weird I'm doing here. And I think I shouldn't have said min and max, rather um, start and end. Uh, so start would be minus, like, plus 90, uh, end would be minus 90. Min and max, I think, uh, are not exactly what I need here. Okay, um, let's see, so I've been going for, I think, an hour. Uh, things are not going well, so I'm going to keep going for a little bit. But we're going to move on to something else, because I'm just getting sort of lost in this, and there is some other stuff I wanted to look at. Okay, so I did promise you guys some real data, and I have actually uh, going to fulfill that promise, but let me let me talk a little bit about what we're going to be looking at before we do it. Um, and hopefully I have a, uh, some notes here. Probably not, though. Um, okay. So here's the URL we're going to look at, assuming I can paste it correctly and not screw anything up. Okay, so the ESA land cover maps basically tell you what land or water is being used for. And the maps look uh, like this. This is a very small version of the map. Um, the really high resolution maps have a lot of data. Uh, in fact, they have too much data. So I'm going to actually upload a smaller uh, resolution one. The uh, resolution I'm going to use is 8192 times 4096. The resolution that they're using, and by the way, their maps do go from plus 90 to minus 90, so we don't have to worry about that. The resolution, uh, the full resolution is 43200 by 21600. I do have that data file. It's not going to fit into Replit. So I've converted an 8192 by 4096 map into data, and I will now, God willing, upload that. It's about 30 megabytes, which makes sense because 8192 times 4096 times one byte for each chunk of data. And there's actually um, only like 30 different values of data you can get. Um, so in theory, I could have put it into five bits, but it's going to take up eight bits because it's just really a pain to go on bit boundaries. Okay, so let's see if I can upload that without killing anything. I'm going to... I don't know, I've not tried this before. So if it works, be semi-impressed. Uh, land use stop bin. Don't even really want to look at that. Eh, I'm going to because I'm just so... It's just binary data, and it's, it's hideous, and we're not going to look at it. Okay, I'm going to give you a cleaner version of this. this is the actual ping file, and the actual... Uh, it's actually a TIFF file. It's a geo-TIFF file, so be impressed by that. Um, this will actually show you much clear, more clearly what the data is. And let's see, that's going to be LCC Global 8192 TIFF. This one we should be able to look at. Um, and so while this is loading, now this has nothing to do with this project. It's something I did earlier. Uh, and the way things are going today, this might actually be the only useful thing you get out of this. Uh, yeah, sorry, this might be the only thing you get out of this that is not completely useless, but it is fairly useless. So. Uh, so this is uh, this is this is going to be uh, an overlay I created earlier of the uh, land use map onto Google Maps, not OSM Google Maps, and this is something I did earlier. So um, so this is going to take a second to load in. And by a second, I mean forever. There it is. Okay, and I'm going to switch over to the Google Maps view of it. So here I've sort of translucently overlaid the land use map uh, over the world using Google Maps. Um, this is sort of what we're aiming towards. At some point we would like to be able to take, pull in this data 
from the server that I'm writing and convert it to colors and make it look nice like this, sort of overlay it on something. This isn't particularly useful to you right now because, of course, you don't know what the various colors mean, but that we can fix. They do have a key for this. And for some reason, NASA keeps the key, uh, but it's the same thing. So, And here's the key. I'm going to zoom it up a little bit. So basically, the green stuff is five different kinds of forests. Um, the key, by the way, does not have water in it, which bugs me, but water isn't land. But they do color the water blue, so, so it really is indicated there. We have shrublands, grasslands, wetlands, agriculture, urban areas, and then the water, which isn't listed. So our target eventually is going to be to get the data from this landuse.bin file, which, wow, they're not happy about that landuse.bin file, which is raw data that represents this map, and pull it in so that we can serve it to any application that requests this data for a given uh, big, given chunk of land uh, with the precision and whatever they want. That's, our, that's where we're going with this. Now, um, one more file that I have. Um, the data file contains raw bytes. The meaning of the raw bytes is in this... Uh, somewhat hideous file, but but not too hideous. Uh, called landusekey.csv. And it's just a really ugly file that comes directly from uh, from the source. So you can see that not all the values are used. We don't actually have 255 values. Um, but the values are coded like this. It's just easier to code them. Uh, and they, they actually say what these are. Tree cover, broadland, blah, 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 blah. And this is the RGB color they use for that. Uh, and I think, I hope this is the correct key for the correct thing that I have. I might have it totally backwards. Uh, urban areas, 195, 20, this is almost pure red, which is how they are doing urban areas. So in theory, these values match these values here. Uh, in, wow, in, rea and I think these are actually, these are actually do, do, do match there, I hope. Okay, so all of this trouble was so we could eventually get to reading data from the file and, and, and actually seeing it sort of like this. Um, now, there's going to be another issue here. Now, this is low resolution, so you can see the city of Albuquerque is urban. Uh, I, because this is translucent, the squares... The squares pixelation doesn't show up exactly as you would expect but uh, this is actually pretty accurate at this level but I mean it does miss some of northern Albuquerque and western Albuquerque uh, because of the because there's a pixel resolution issue here the 43 200 by uh, you know half of the 21 600 uh, map is actually quite a bit better about that it actually um, it actually has a tighter grid than that and this is actually pretty good you can see that the the green areas go over where we'd expect mountains to be. If you go to satellite view, um, obviously the city isn't actually red, but for the uh, other values, like the the, uh, the, the forests and the uh, the shrub area, it's a pretty good overlay. In fact, it's such a good overlay, it's actually hard to notice where the Google Maps imagery ends and where the overlay begins. Um, although, well, if you go in far enough, you should be able to see the see the boundaries. Wow. It, yeah, it's sort of hard to see, but but they are there. Uh, just trust me on that. Hello, Lurks. Nice to see you. Um, it's so... So, if you have any questions, uh, so the people in chat, one person in chat, has any questions, good time to ask them now. Um, I might end the stream, but I might also see if we can grab some data out of this actual file that I've created. Um, hopefully it's finished loading. Let's see if it's happy with this now as a TIFF file. In theory, Replit can display TIFF files as TIFF files. Okay, but apparently this one is either too big or it just doesn't like it. So that's kind of bad. Okay. Actually, I think, unless there's any questions, I'm going to go ahead and end this stream. I might stream later today to finish this up. 
uh, at our next big step, of course, we'll be looking at the actual data, pulling it out, and um, there will be other issues here. For example, if we're going to look at data, if someone requests data at a higher precision that we have it, we don't really want to interpolate, but we want to do nearest neighbor quasi-interpolation, which means if we can't give them the data they want, we will give them the data at the point closest to the data they want. Um, and that's called nearest neighbor interpolation. It's not really interpolation because it is, it's sort of a, it doesn't actually average out any values. But that is sort of the standard way of doing it. And if we can do all that, and if they request data at a lower resolution than we have, um, then we have to sort of choose which points to give them data for, since we're not going to give them data for every point. And again, that's something we, we can work on next time. Okay, so I think I'm going to call it for the stream right now. Thank you for watching. Uh, have a nice day or don't. I don't give a damn. Bye for now.